In my last video, I delved into making the world's fastest RTX A4000 by developing a power shunt mod and a power mod that allowed you to use an 8-pin PCIe connector instead of a 6-pin PCIe connector in collaboration with John from JKNG Ventures. However, what about its littler brother, the RTX A2000? I want to introduce you all to the RTX A2000 Ti X3, the world's fastest A2000. My end goal for this guy here is to beat NFC or Not From Concentrate's RTX A2000 mod they developed called the RTX A2000 Ti. Josh and Eric over there are true artisans with computer building and you really should check them out because they made their own custom water block, cooling loop, computer case, but they water cooled their RTX A2000 in their video, but I wanted to do it on air. First things first was I sent this card over at the same time as my RTX A4000 over to John at JKNG Ventures, and he was kind enough to do the shunt mod at the same time as the A4000. Now, when I got this card back, I could not keep the thermals under control after getting shunt modded. It was pretty much thermal throttling 24 seven. It actually got past the 89 degrees uh, area where the card will eventually thermal throttle itself. It got up into the 90s and I was really not comfortable with the temperatures for this stock cooler. So I wanted to develop my own. Also not to mention that I had really, really big issues with my RTX A2000's fan or heatsink. It just made this kind of acoustic whine that was really irritating. Unfortunately, I didn't record it, but I found another YouTuber that had the exact same problem as I did with their cooler, and here's what it sounds like. As you can see, not too pleasant to the ears. After doing a ton of research on the internet on RTX A2000 mods, I came across a small form factor forum with a user by the name of Revok Cases. They developed a triple fan mod and they were nice enough to share those 3D modeling files with the rest of us on the forum. So with that 3D model in hand, we were now able to print this shroud that you see here. Now that we have check that off our list, we needed to figure out a heat sink for the RTX A2000. Because the piddly little aluminum one that Nvidia decided to include with the RTX A2000 just wasn't gonna cut it. I stumbled across another mod by the user called Nerdware, and Nerdware developed a mod where they had CNC'd a copper block, or basically a copper heatsink, for the RTX A2000. Now, they did confirm that this was not compatible with Revok Case's triple fan shroud, however, I decided to take matters into my own hands and hand cut the copper block heatsink that I bought from Nerdware to make it fit. The one thing I was concerned about with this mod for the RTX A2000 was the fan's power draw. All the power comes out of the PCIe slot which means that the fans actually take away from the power budget that is available to the GPU die because there's no external power. Now we don't want to overdraw that power because the stock fan is 0.6 amps and we need to keep below that. I ended up figuring out some fans on AliExpress that were 15 millimeters thick instead of the Silverstone ones, which were 10 millimeters thick. The fans on AliExpress only draw 0.17 amps. So if we multiply that by three, that's 0.51 amps instead of 0.6. So we're actually more power efficient compared to the stock fan on the RTX A2000, which leaves more power for the RTX a2000 to use for overclocking. What I ended up doing was soldering all the fans together and plugging them into the PCB or the fan controller on the graphics card itself. This way I'm able to control the fan speed with MSI Afterburner whenever I want without having a motherboard header. Both the heatsink and the uh, backplate have thermal pads on them and they definitely really help out with the memory temperatures when it comes to overclocking the memory. So now that we have this guy fully assembled, it's ready to go, it's thermal pasted, thermal padded up, we got the fan shroud, we got three fans, we have the copper heat sink, the active backplate, we are now ready for some synthetic benchmarks and gaming benchmarks and gun for those world records when it comes to the benchmarks. First things first is we're gonna start with the 3D Mark benchmarks. The very first one that we're gonna run is Firestrike. For the Firestrike score, we got 21,548. The graphics score was 22,803, and the physics score was 29,501 for a combined score of 11,860. With that in mind, that left us with the fourth place positioning on the 3D Mark benchmarks, so not too shabby as a first run. Moving on to the next one, which was Firestrike Extreme. Our Firestrike Extreme score was 10,367 points. 
Our graphics score was 10,547 points. Our physics score was 29,535 points. And our combined score was 4,935 points, which was third place on the Fire Strike Extreme rankings for the leaderboards, which is okay in my books. Again, not a world record, but we keep going. As for Fire Strike Ultra, we got a Fire Strike Ultra score of 5,338 points. The graphics score was 5,135 points. The physics score was 29,296 points. And the combined score was 2,700. 166 points for yet another result of third place on leaderboards. Moving on to Night Raid, our Night Raid score was 58,237 points with a graphics score of 108,753 points with a CPU score of 16,034 points, which gave us the world record for the Night Raid score for the RTX A2000. So put one on the board for our mod of the RTX A2000 Ti X3. So moving on to Port Royal, our Port Royal score was 5,093 points, which is yet another world record for our mod. So moving on to Solar Bay. With the Solar Bay benchmark, we got a score of 40,657 points, which is now the third world record that we have for our RTX A2000. Moving on to Speedway, we got a Speedway score of 2,245, which is now the fourth world record that we hold for the RTX A2000. That's more like it. Moving on to the big dog of 3D Mark, which is Time Spy. So our Time Spy score was 9,131. Our graphics score was 8,820, with a CPU score of 11,495. Now, unfortunately, this only put us in top 10. I got 10th with my run of Time Spy, which means I'm definitely gonna have to water cool the A2000 if I really wanna take the world record for Time Spy. Time Spy is always competitive, so I, I expected this much from Time Spy. But moving on to Time Spy Extreme. With Time Spy Extreme, we got a score of 4,247, with a graphics score of 4,142, and a CPU score of 4,967, which did indeed give us the world record for Time Spy Extreme. So I was very happy with that. That is yet another world record. That is the fifth one that we've got for the RTX A2000. Moving on to Wildlife, our Wildlife score was 52,021, which is, again, another world record for our A2000. So that is number six that we have. Moving on to the final benchmark that we did in 3D Mark, which was Wildlife Extreme. We got a Wildlife Extreme score of 17,707, which gave us the world record for that as well. So we got seven out of 11 world records for the RTX A2000 on 3D Mark, which I'm super pleased with. Unfortunately, we didn't get all the world records, but maybe we'll get there in the future. So let's move on to a few more synthetic benchmarks to compare ours to NFC, which was Octane and Blender. So for Octane Bench 2020.1.5, we got a score of 315.42, which is the world record for the RTX A2000 for Octane Bench. So add another one to the trophy shelf for our RTX A2000 mod. So moving on to the Blender benchmark, this is the version 3.2.1. So with our RTX mod, we got a score of 2,614.14, which is yet another world record for our RTX A2000 mod, so add another one to the trophy case. With the synthetic benchmarks now out of the way, we are going to get into the gaming benchmarks, and we ran a bunch of games, as well as the same ones that NFC ran for their RTX A2000 mod that they did as well. The first game up is always going to be Apex Legends, as it is my favorite game to play. So we ran Apex at 1080p, and we ran that on low-medium mix-up settings for competitive settings, and that netted us a maximum FPS of 144 FPS. We got an average FPS of 143 FPS, and we got a minimum FPS of 120. Our 1% low was 107, and our 0.1% low was 80. As for 1440p, we got a maximum FPS of 144 FPS. Our average FPS was 131 FPS, and our minimum FPS was 66. As for the 1% lows, we got 88 for the 1% low, and our 0.1% low was 64. So really good showing out of our RTX A2000 on 1440p as well. I'd be very comfortable while running Apex at 1440p on the RTX A2000. Next up was Hogwarts Legacy. We were running this on the medium preset at 1080p. We tested both with DLSS on and off. So starting with DLSS off, we got a maximum FPS of 106. Our average FPS was 85. Our minimum FPS was 66. 
and our 1% low was 48, as well as a 0.1% low of 38. Now, what was really interesting, when turning the LSS on at 1080p, it actually harmed our performance, and I tested this multiple times. So with it being on, we got a maximum FPS of 91, an average FPS of 75, our minimum FPS was 57, the 1% low was 43, and the 0.1% low was 29. For DLSS being off at 1440p, we got a maximum frame rate of 67 FPS, an average FPS of 62, a minimum FPS of 56, a 1% low of 34, and a 0.1% low of 26. As for 1440p with DLSS on, we got a maximum FPS of 90, an average FPS of 74, a minimum FPS of 58, a 1% low of 43, and a 0.1% low of 33. So DLSS managed to help us out with 1440p. For whatever reason, it did not with 1080p, which is a rather strange result. But I'm still very happy with the results at 1440p, and I would say this is very playable. The next game up that we decided to test was Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. We're going to start with 1080p with FSR on and off. This was running at the high preset on the graphics slider. With FSR off, we got a maximum FPS of 127, an average FPS of 103, a minimum FPS of 85, a 1% low of 84, and a 0.1% low of 48. With FSR on, this was set to quality FSR. We got a maximum FPS of 170. We got an average FPS of 127, a minimum FPS of 109, a 1% low of 108, and a 0.1% low of 53. So let's move on to 1440p with FSR on and off. Running at 1440p with FSR off, we got a maximum FPS of 79, an average FPS of 68, a minimum FPS of 55, a 1% low of 53, and a 0.1% low of 36. With FSR on with the quality FSR preset at 1440p, we got a maximum FPS of 110, an average FPS of 89, a minimum FPS of 77, a 1% low of 75, and a 0.1% low of 48. I would definitely say it performed really, really well for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I'm extremely happy with the 1440p results, and I'll definitely be running the game with FSR quality on as well. Next up was another game that I figured would push the RTX A2000 pretty heavily, which was Horizon Zero Dawn. First up, we're gonna start with 1080p. This is with DLSS off and on, and we chose the graphics preset of favor quality. With DLSS off, we got a maximum FPS of 150, an average FPS of 125, a minimum FPS of 106, a 1% low of 104, and a 0.1% low of 102. After turning on DLSS for Horizon Zero Dawn, we got a maximum FPS of 177, an average FPS of 157, a minimum FPS of 126, a 1% low of 120, and a 0.1% low of 107. Moving on to the 1440p benchmarks for Horizon Zero Dawn. So with DLSS off, we got a maximum FPS of 102, an average FPS of 84, a minimum FPS of 72, a 1% low of 69, and a 0.1% low of 66. After turning on DLSS, we got a maximum FPS of 128, an average FPS of 114, a minimum FPS of 90, a 1% low of 98, and a 0.1% low of 94. So as you can see, the RTX A2000 did a really good job with Horizon Zero Dawn as well. Moving on to one of the games that NFC used for their benchmarks, which was Control. We were running this at 1080p and DirectX 12 using the high graphics preset. And this had no ray tracing as well. So with those settings and running at 1080p, we got a maximum FPS of 97, an average FPS of 85, a minimum FPS of 76, a 1% low of 75, and a 0.1% low of 71. Cranking up the resolution to 1440p with the same settings, we got a maximum FPS of 89, an average FPS of 81, a minimum FPS of 77, a 1% low of 75, and a 0.1% low of 72. Moving on to the second game that NFC benchmarked, which was Final Fantasy XV. This program only spits out a score, therefore we don't have any maximum, minimum, or average FPS numbers for you. So our final score for 4K high was 3,651. As for the 4K light benchmark, we got a final score of 5,736. Next up is going to be Rise of the Tomb Raider. This is going to be our final game benchmark. This is one of the ones that NFC also ran as well. So running at 1080p high settings with no AA and no DLSS, we got a maximum FPS of 191, an average FPS of 129, a minimum FPS of 85, a 1% low of 87, and a 0.1% low of 80. As for 1440p, again the same settings as 1080p, we got a maximum FPS of 140, an average FPS of 87, a 
minimum FPS of 58, a 1% low of 60, and a 0.1% low of 57. So I'm just gonna do a quick comparison of everything that NFC had for their spreadsheet that they provided in the description of their video and all of the results that I got. So starting with Time Spy, NFC scored 8,095 points for the Time Spy score, 7,831 for the graphics score, and 10,103 for the CPU score. Meanwhile, I scored 9,139 points for the Time Spy score and 8,820 points for the graphics score, and lastly, 11,495 for the CPU score. Next, if we compare Octane bench scores NFC scored 281.6 meanwhile I scored 315.42 moving on to blender NFC scored 2280.9 and I scored 2614.14 for blender as for the gaming benchmarks, NFC only provided their average FPS on their gaming benchmark, so I'm also going to do the same. For control running at 1080p, NFC scored 65 FPS on the average FPS. For 1440p, they got 48 FPS for their average. Meanwhile, for 1080p, I got 85 FPS for my average, and for 1440p, I got 81 FPS for my average. Next up was the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark, so NFC, using the 4K Lite preset, scored 5,634 points. For 4K High preset, they scored 3,486 points. Meanwhile, for the 4K Lite preset, I scored 5,736 points, and for the 4K High preset, I scored 3,651 points. Lastly, there's Rise of the Tomb Raider. On 1080p, NFC scored 105 average FPS. For 1440p, they scored 72 average FPS. Meanwhile, for me, on 1080p, I scored 129 FPS for my average. And for 1440p, I scored 87 FPS for my average. Next, let's compare all of the thermal data that I got before and after the mods that I performed in this video. So in the beginning, I showed you that the graphics card was running at about 94 degrees Celsius while playing Overwatch 2. And the hottest I ever saw the RTX A2000 get before doing all of the heatsink, the shroud, and the fan mod was 96 degrees Celsius, which is way too warm in my opinion. But after doing all of the backplate modding, the shroud, the heatsink, and the fan mod, the hottest I ever saw the RTX A2000 get well overclocked was 84 degrees Celsius, which is a massive improvement for thermals in my opinion, and makes me more comfortable using the RTX A2000 while being overclocked in the long run. So what did you guys think of this little bad boy here? Not too bad for an RTX A2000, wouldn't you say? So after all those test results, my RTX A2000 managed to snag 7 of 11 3D Mark benchmarks world records, which I think is really awesome. I really want to go for all 11 world records, but I know I'm going to have to probably water cool this thing, which is going to be a little bit more difficult and harder to manage, but maybe I'll do that on my own time, or maybe we'll make another video in the future. But we also managed to surpass all of NFC's benchmarking tests in terms of scores as well. So I'm super happy with the end results for this bad boy here, and I'm really pleased to have a travel GPU that I can take with me when I'm on the go and know that it's gonna perform really, really well. With that said, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more content like this, more modding content for PCs, hit that like button and subscribe button on my YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to check out Eric and Josh over at NFC. They are true artisans at computer modding and I really highly recommend their channel. Thank you so much for watching once again and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.